Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's okay, I'm all. Today I'm bringing you the passives only guide. I decided to put this guide together since I had quite a few questions as to how we made this build work, why it's so strong, and a few tips to keep you alive, getting you through the troll fight, the manticore fight, and ultimately to the tier four dungeons. So having said that, let's get right into the guide. So the first thing I want to cover is which passives to get at each level up. So I slapped this image together just to kind of give you guys an overview so if you want to follow my build exactly, these are the levels at which I unlocked each individual passive ability as well as some of the actives. Now keep in mind, we did have to unlock a couple of actives just to get to certain passives, right? So don't feel bad if you have to unlock a passive, just throw it off your hotbar, we're not going to use them. So now let's cover the abilities a little bit more in depth. So if we go to the rage weapons, obviously dexterity makes a lot of sense. This particular passive was very strong early on and it continues to be strong in the later game. Basically, killing an enemy with melee strikes will activate taking aim. While considering this is a passive and taking aim is an active, getting taking aim for free is a huge DPS buff for our character. So not only does it activate taking aim for one turn after killing an enemy, but you'll also get your crossbow reloaded for free. As an added benefit, dexterity will also allow you to switch to your melee weapon without taking a turn. And lastly, this will also reduce the chances of bolts or arrows breaking upon hitting their target from 50 down to 25%. The second ability we started off with at level 1 was Disengage. Disengage will reduce the chance of triggering attacks of opportunity, as well as apply all adjacent enemies with more fumble chance and less accuracy. So this is another one of those passives that, again, starting the game off really helps out. It's going to increase our survivability a bit by, again, increasing the enemy's fumble and decreasing their accuracy so they hit us less and are more prone to fumble attacks. And if you guys don't know, fumbling an attack will set its stun, daze, knockback, immobilization, stagger, and bleed chances to zero. So it's bad enough when we fumble ourselves, but by increasing the enemy's chance to fumble definitely helps with our survivability. Now at level 2 we went for Not This Time. Not This Time will grant you plus 20% fortitude for 5 turns upon receiving a negative mental or physical effect, as well as once per 90 turns will automatically remove a stun, daze, stagger, or immobilization upon receiving it. At level 3, we went ahead and got set up. So skipping a turn will grant us 10% more accuracy and negative 10 damage taken. And in this case, when we are waiting for the enemy to show up to the fight, we can skip a turn, skip a turn until they get to us. And this is going to put us in a very good position when we first engage with the enemy. You can even use this in the middle of a fight if you want to decrease damage taken. You feel the enemy is going to be using a stronger attack. Now it's completely up to you whether you get set up or not this time. At level 2, I guess really level 2, level 3, it's really interchangeable. Doesn't really matter which one you get. At level 4, I went back into the ranged weapons and we went ahead and grabbed up Constant Practice. Constant Practice will reduce the distance penalty to accuracy from negative 2 to negative 1 per tile. Reduce the penalties to accuracy when shooting over small and medium sized obstacles. As well as reduce the accuracy penalty to bows when shooting at adjacent targets from negative 50 to negative 25 and targets that are one tile away from 25 to 50. I picked this one up because we are utilizing a crossbow to deal a decent amount of damage to the enemies, so the less impact I have on my accuracy, the better. At level 5 and level 6 respectively, we went ahead and grabbed up Adaptability and Ever Vigilant. Adaptability will grant us 10% fatigue resistance. Fatigue resistance isn't really a big deal, we don't cast any spells, so that's not the major part of this but it does reduce the durations of poisonings, hangovers, bad trips, and aftermath by 50%, meaning that you can take more drugs with you and it's going to be less impactful on your character. Adaptability also reduces the effect of damaged body parts on maximum health threshold by 25% and increasing the effectiveness of immunity when recovering from intoxication by 33 And the last thing it does is while affected by vigor, you'll get 10% health restoration as well as 0.01% morale change. Now the additional health restoration is amazing, especially if you can find a weapon with life drain or a ring or amulet. Now Ever Vigilant is another defensive based passive. Now this will grant all received strikes, less accuracy and less crit chance. In fact, it decreases the enemy's crit chance by half. This will also grant us 5% dodge chance as well as doubling the chances of evading traps. Now this passive is very important to have and if we can't use examine surroundings, the odds of us finding a trap randomly and then stepping on it are increased exponentially so having ever vigilant uh is just gonna help us evade traps more often 
at level seven, we went ahead and got hard target. This is a passive that personally I've underestimated. Each shot taken at the character will grant you 5% more dodge chance for five turns and apply the attacker with negative seven and a half accuracy for four turns. And both of these effects can stack up to four times and trigger twice if the shot hits its target. And as an added bonus, all received strikes will have negative 10% armor penetration. With this passive here, you'll notice the effects immediately. Pop into a dungeon, find an archer, and you'll probably miss every single shot. At level 8, we went down and got Dissipation. At this point during my playthrough, I was fighting mages inside of the Manshire dungeons. I was fighting mages inside of the Proselyte dungeons as well as the Onteds. So, now Dissipation does two things for us. Each point of received magic or nature damage or replenish our energy, but also grant us 1.5% magic or nature resistance for five turns and can stack up to 20 times. And being that we're passives only, there's zero dash ability. We have to walk all the way up to the mages, taking each and every single damaging attack in the face. So having dissipation to increase our magic res is very important. At level nine, we went into self-repair. Self-repair do a couple things for us. First off, it'll grant negative 15% to the equipped armor and weapons durability loss rate. Allows us to dismantle pieces of armor into fragments, which can be used to repair other armor, and also occasionally receive them as loot when killing enemies. It'll reduce the durability threshold of repair kits from 80 to 60. And lastly, each equipped piece of armor with durability above 80% will grant us 5% move res to the respected body part, as well as 2.5% fortitude. Now the main takeaway here is to add more bleed res to each body part, effectively reducing the chance that we get bled by an enemy. Now at level 10, there's not very many passives left for us to take, uh, especially since we're going to be going down for peak performance. So at level 10, you have to get an active. There's nothing you can do about it. We'll grab the active up, but we won't be using it, so just throw it off the hot bar. At level 11, we're going to be grabbing up No Time to Linger. No Time to Linger will grant melee strikes against dazed, stunned, staggered, confused, immobilized, or bleeding targets. More accuracy and even more crit chance. It increases both of those by 10%. The second half of this applies only to Sudden Lunge, so it means nothing to our build. At level 12, 13, and 14, we'll grab up Dash, Elusiveness, and ultimately this is going to be the bread and butter of the build. It increases our weapon damage and our dodge chance by 15%. This is massive. And the only stipulation to keep peak performance active is to keep our energy above 50%. The only times your energy should dip below 50% is if you pop a Vivifying Essence. Vivifying Essences decreases your energy while replenishing your HP. So after you defeat the Manticore, uh, the last few abilities that you can unlock are gonna be Brace for Impact, Battle Forged, and Custom Adjustments. So Battle Forged says that if you use stances or maneuvers, you'll take 20% less damage taken. Well, that doesn't mean anything for the passives only. We can't use stances and we can't use maneuvers. But if you read the second half here, if equipped with a light chest plate, moving to other tiles grants plus 2% dodge chance and plus 2% counter chance for six turns for each traveled tile. Now with the way that we built this character, that means we're constantly going to have additional dodge and counter chance as we walk around the dungeon pretty much at all times. So long as you're not standing still for long periods of time, you're always going to have an additional dodge, additional counter chance applied to your character. Now, lastly, to round off the build, we have custom adjustments. Now, this particular build, we went with mostly light armor. So that means each equipped piece of light armor will grant us more protection to the respective body part. If you are equipped with medium armor, you'll grant more bleed resistance to the respective body part. Now that we've covered the abilities, let's cover the stats. As you can tell here, we went full agility. Now, agility wasn't my first choice. A viewer on Twitch suggested that we go full agility. The idea behind it is to rack up as much dodge chance as possible. Plus, it also reduces our fumble and increases counter chance. And let me tell you, it worked out so, so well. If I scroll down to our survival, I have a base of 85. Now, let, me, let, me, let me sit still here. Just make sure I wasn't moving around. So a base of 80, sorry, a base of 74, right? skip turns if i move 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 right we're constantly moving meaning we have a total of 84 percent chance to dodge that's pretty impressive now if i take my backpack off 
and put that on. We have now 89% chance to dodge. Pretty freaking impressive. 89 chance to dodge without a single active ability. It's insane. Absolutely broken. So now that we've covered abilities and we've covered stats, let's move on to the equipment. When it comes to some of the best in-slot items for this build, at least in my opinion, we're going to want to go with the exact items I have here, except for rings, necklaces, those pick the best ones you have, right? But to start us off with is the Duelist Doublet. It has the best dodge chance that you can get on a chest plate, as well as having a high counter chance. Go over to the boots, they also give you 12% dodge chance. I went with Splint Van Braces, because they also have a very high dodge chance, while also decreasing fumble. We kept the ear guards from the troll because they're just, it's a solid piece. The only thing I would say that would be better than the ear guards would be to head to the prison and get the unique helmet from there. When it comes to the belts, this is probably one of the better ones to go with, the Gilded Nobleman belt. You get bleed resistance, accuracy, more dodge chance. The jousting cloak's very solid all around. You gain physical res, nature res, and magic res, while also gaining 5% dodge and decreasing damage by 5%. Now, since I went ahead and took a bunch of these items to the witch to get them cursed, there's a reason why I have what I have. We got more weapon damage here while also increasing the pain that we receive, but we also gained seven physical resistance and more health. Moving on to the coin talisman, we got one with life drain. So 15% life drain, negative 33% hunger. Also, offsetting the pain res, we gain plus 13 pain res and 6% health restoration. Again, life drain and health restoration, they go hand in hand but that also offsets that pain reduction a little bit. I got a silver topaz ring, because if we look over here currently, I have a base of 84.7% accuracy. Now, Thelmir is a very solid choice for this build. If we look at his trait, to each his own, upon receiving an attack, Velmir will be granted 5% more accuracy for five turns, while the attacker is applied with plus five damage taken. I believe this trait is bar none one of the best ones to have as a passives only. It allows us to worry less about accuracy and just overall increases our damage that the enemies take. So when you pair this with a weapon like the Elven Long Axe, which has a base of 42 damage, your DPS is through the roof and you don't even have to have an active ability. It's just insane the amount of damage that we deal. Now let's switch to our offhand. We ended up going for the crossbows, right? So we had crossbows throughout this entire run and crossbows came in so clutch. In this case, we went ahead and purchased the win last crossbow. It's something that you can only get at Amity level here in Bryn. So it's not something you're gonna get right off the bat, but there are plenty of crossbows to get prior to hitting Amity level here in Bryn. This just happens to be one we picked up and it helped immensely. We had it during the Manticore fight, took him out with ease. It was probably one of the easiest times I've ever had against the Manticore, and I don't even know why. <laughs> it was so stupid. All right, the next things I want to talk about are some tips and tricks to kind of get you going, get you started off in this build. First and foremost, I start every single playthrough off by stealing from anybody and everybody I can. In this case, we got a couple good items. We got some arrows, we got a pelt, and you're gonna to wanna to hit up all the houses that you can. Just be mindful, don't get caught. If you get caught, that's money that you waste. Just don't get caught, <laughs> essentially is what it comes down to. In this next clip, I'm gonna show you just how cautious I am when I'm first engaging with enemies. So this is obviously right off the bat. I didn't even reload, cause you know, I'm trash. But this guy here is already bleeding. And we're gonna have these dudes chase us down. And when we get closer to the edge of the tile, so long as this guy's close enough to us, he will follow us while the other guy will just stay in this particular map tile. So we go, we go, we go. He was close enough, so he does follow us. There he is. Now from here, we're obviously going to shoot him to death until he gets close enough. So take aim, shoot. Gotta shoot him again. Bam. So at this point, since we have dexterity, we can switch to our melee weapons for free. We'll show that here next. There we go. Didn't take a turn. And now we can just stab him to death. There we go. Easy peasy. And since we killed him with melee, dexterity reloads the crossbow. And the moment I switch back to my crossbow, we will be affected with taking aim. So I'm going to hit play again. So from here, I'm going to switch weapons and I'm going to be affected by taking aim. There we go. Now we have taking aim at the very top of the screen. And that first hit is guaranteed to hit. Bam. Now we just need to reload. Probably going to miss a bunch. 
hit him again, and there we go, he's dead. Super, super easy. Now in this next clip, don't be afraid to take advantage of dexterity as soon as it's ready. So if we look here, I'm gonna hit play. We're gonna switch weapons, and we take this guy out. This dude here is one tile away, but I just killed somebody, so that means that if I do switch to my ranged weapon, it's gonna be reloaded, and I'm gonna have taking aim. So hit play. We're gonna switch weapons. And now we get to do, what was that, 27 piercing damage to this guy's head. And now I can switch back to my melee and stab him to death. And now that's going to reload my crossbow. And anytime I switch back to my crossbow, I got to take a game again. So super good strategy. Highly recommend it. Now in this next clip, we're helping out the brewery where we have to go to the brigands then and take on the bandits. And there's usually about four or five bandits here. I'm going to turn the volume up on this one and let it play out because I take out all four or five bandits pretty much back to back which early game is super hard to do on most builds but in this case it played out very well wait for it wait for it so we kill the first guy take aim shoot the guy next Take him out. I know, I'm thinking super hard here. <laughs> Alright boys, at this, at this stage in the game, I don't know... Okay, we're, I, think, I believe we switch, yep. More taking aim. Switch again, look at that. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was smooth! Holy cow, that was smooth. Now, as you can tell from my reaction, absolutely was not expecting that. Dexterity cannot be underestimated. It is so strong. So if you do want to spend one point on anything, probably go for dexterity. Don't ever overlook it. Now that you guys have a better idea of what abilities to go into, what sort of strategies to use, don't forget to bring along traps or nets, as those can definitely be the difference between life and death. The other thing I want to note is that in terms of weapons, you can use any melee weapon available. If you find a really, really good blue weapon and it's got amazing enchants, throw it on. Try it out. The beauty of this build is we're not locked behind a certain weapon. I still think that in the long run, grabbing up an Elven Long Axe at Amity level here in Bryn is going to be super worth it. But leading up to this point, use anything you can get your hands on. Personally, I bounce between a spear, a sword, and a mace throughout my playthrough. All of them have their pros and their cons. So don't be afraid to test these weapons out and find out which one suits you the best. Now, I also highly recommend using any life drain that you find. If it's on your necks or your rings, grab it up, put it on. But I think that'll do it for today's guide. I hope I covered enough information. If you guys have any further questions, you guys know what to do. Leave a comment down below. I'll answer any questions to the best of my abilities. So if you did enjoy this guide, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this channel with your friends and family, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye.